Fun, written by Neil Shusterman, is a book which makes you think, and that's high praise. The book is about a world where no one dies except for those who are chosen by the sastra, whose entire job is to glean people. For such a morbid idea, it is magnificently well executed, and by the end leaves you in love with the world. And to discuss this book with us is Arsh. Hello, Arsh. Hello, everyone. My name is Arsh. I am eleven years old. Um, I'm going to be telling you about one of my favorite dystopian novels called Scythe. Now, Scythe is, in my opinion. the perfect dystopian novel as it contains everything a dystopian novel should have it takes place in a future world a world different from ours it is extremely brutal it has a lot of emotion in it it is really gore and that's the thing about a dystopian novel throughout the book you're seeing mass murder you're seeing genocide you're seeing bloodshed but at the end of the book you actually see happiness and this is probably the first time in the book when you're seeing the characters happy so it really hits you when you finish a dystopian series as it has so much emotion through the series And now I'm left wondering how and why did you pick up this book was it recommended to you by somebody or how did you go about it I remember when I was in a bookshop and I saw a book on which it was written a true success of the hunger games and I read that and it surprised me a lot because i am a hunger games fan and for the longest time i thought that the hunger games is probably the greatest book in the world because it is a classic and it is just dystopian fiction at its best so i saw it and i thought the it's probably a scam since a lot of times we have all seen books which have titles such as uh, successes of other great great books but i read the blurb of sight and i decided to buy it this was when i got completely addicted to the book to the series and um, i remember staying up till 2 in the night to finish the book and it was just such a nice book you make some excellent points on dystopia and why it's successful i'm glad you bought scythe just like i'm glad that i did as well before we plunge into the world of scythe Would you like to give us a little bit of a back story? The book takes place in a perfect world where there is no hunger, there is no poverty, and the world is absolutely perfect. There there is no killing for no reason. But in a world where there is no death, people who die can be revived. Where or rather how will we be able to contain the human population if it is growing and no one is dying so that is where the sites come in they are the people who glean people and the, what the word glean means is killing someone and after that they can't be revived this is of course to balance the population What were your opinions on the thunderhead and its relationship with the sites? 
I would say that the relationship is very unique as the Thunderhead is the artificial intelligence that manages the whole world. It is the government, it is the politicians, it is everything. It is always looking and it is basically what controls everything. It makes sure that nothing goes wrong. Sites, on the other hand, like I just mentioned, control death. They kill people randomly. I feel they have a really unique relationship because both of them are doing their own part to preserve humanity. And I feel the Thunderhead, of course, can't speak to sites since that's part of its programming. It'll do what's best for humans. They do indeed have a unique relationship. A sort of varied treaty, keeping humanity in place, as you said, and keeping its population in check. Did you enjoy Citra and Rowan more during this training from Sides Faraday or from Sides Curie and Godard? I personally enjoyed Citra and Rowan more during the training with Sides. Curie and Goddard, as I feel that's when the book actually starts to pick pace. As Sight Curie and Goddard are both legendary sites. Sight Goddard is someone who kills in the masses, who is a really gruesome person. While Sight Curie is one of the most respected sites. And so, I enjoyed their training with Sight Goddard and Curie as Rowan and Sita were both training with people who were opposites of each other. So, I feel that Rowan was struggling as, of course, he was not a cruel minded person. He didn't want to be a Sight in the first place, neither did Sita. So, I feel their training with Sight Curie and Goddard was really interesting compared to their training with Sight Forty, as that lasted for a very short time. And I feel that's when the story starts to take a twist as you hear the perspectives of both the characters. Rowan is on humongous gleaning missions where he's constantly gleaning people. And as for Sight, Curie, and Chitra, they are learning to be wise sites. I totally agree that the contrasting personalities of Citra and Curie and Rowan and Godard does make it far more compelling than the basic training that they had with Faraday. All the sites seem to be different while they are carrying on the same jobs. But which did you feel were the most notable differences between Sites Godard and Sites Curie and Faraday, and especially for you? Some of the most notable sites in the books were the three mentors of the main protagonists, Sight Goddard, Sight Curie, and Sight Forde. Now, of course, Sight Curie was trained by Sight Forde, who back then was not a very respected Sight, and of course was a new Sight. And he trained Sight Curie after five years of becoming a Sight. So, Sight Curie was not respected, but I feel they both made their name and they became something great. So, yeah. They both are also really wise sites and they're really similar to each other. As after the their training period, they both fall in love with each other, as was mentioned in the book. But Prometheus found out about it 
and they both had to face consequences but Scythe Goddard on the other hand was trained by the high blade so he was not really mocked and he is not a wise Scythe he kills for his own entertainment and he believes what he's doing is good though it is not as he is an absolutely brutal man he will kill anyone for any reason as towards the end of the book we saw that sight volta self gleaned since of course he was tired of walking for sight godard as the scene that happened in the school was quite distressing when they were killing children for no reason at all yes that's right there are three extremely respectable characters mentors with their different personalities like you've mentioned and they've all made their own names in the world which also affects the story in many different ways What part of the Scythe culture did you find the most fascinating and which one did you find most repulsive No to me Scythe culture is really interesting I love the way it works the fact that people are trained to be highly skilled assassins the way that they are the most respected people I really like that I find their techniques the most fascinating the way that they train the way that they learn all arts of kill craft i find that really really interesting the thing i find really repulsive about side culture is how unfair it is and how some sites are good and they know what they're doing is for the betterment of humanity while some aren't and some glean in the masses for no reason at all so i find it really repulsive that sites are respected so much just because people are scared of them Those are interesting picks Arsh and I agree with you about the unfairness and the coolness as well. It's time for the favorite moments. So what was your favorite moment from your favorite character? And what did that moment invoke in you? When Rowan slaughtered Scythe Goddard and everyone else. I feel that was an act of resistance. and an act of justice over evil and i found it really brave and really an act of resistance so anyways i found that moment really interesting um i loved the way it went through i loved the way it happened Oh yeah that is a really good moment with a lot of poignance and yes bravery of course was there an action taken by the protagonist in the book which you felt that you cannot in principle agree with it in the last book of the series the toll when well site 40 destroys all the rings of the sites and i feel that that was very wrong of him another thing that i find really wrong is sitra giving up her self being a site to someone else i feel giving up being a site was not something right as sitra or site anastasia as she was called was one of the most respected sites as she was really young and her gleaning methods were extremely unique compared to the other sites so i feel who doing this was not 
the smartest of moves. What were your initial opinions on the character of Walter? And how did they change throughout the book? Because I felt that this was one character who actually carried forward the book. It was his actions that reflected in the book so much. So my opinion on Seth Walter was that he worked with Seth Goddard, of course. But he still knew what was right and what was wrong. I feel that's what also led Rowan to his resistance against Seth Goddard as it was Seth Walter who self-gleaned. And that made Ruben unleash something. It made Ruben resist sight Goddard and it made Ruben stand up for what is good. Like we said, he is a mercurial character whose personality really comes into its own as the book goes on. And his impact on Rowan is extremely pivotal. Tell me, Arsh, if you had to be a Scythe, would you be more like Rowan or Citra? Now, if I had to be a Scythe, I would choose to be Rowan. As, like I mentioned, Rowan is one of my favorite characters because I really liked what he did. I really liked the way he would assassinate other Scythes, the way he would do what he did and how he would do it. And that is why... I would choose to be Rovin over Sitra. Well, you have been associated with members of Book Bibuli, been part of the book club and their guided reading program. I hope you've had a good time with that. Yes, they are all helping me record this post- podcast and tell you about this amazing series. I was there for their book clubs. They are amazing. I suggest joining Bookby Bully right now for some of the greatest book clubs and reading experiences you'll ever experience. That's wonderful. I believe that is the entire focus for Bookby Bully. Thank you very much, Arsh, for being with us today. Thank you all so much for listening to my podcast. I really appreciate it. Scythe is an interesting book to read. It deviates from the modern pattern of young adult fiction and instead combines light notes with the incredibly dark theme of an organization whose job is to glean people whose time has come. And now it's time for the book Bibuli read record. The language of the book is clear and lucid, and the concepts created by a mind which seems capable of thinking, in fact, excelling in it. The book does not weigh deeply on the reader's soul. Instead, it weighs on your mind, forcing you to think about the entire concept and the different ideas proposed by different factions in the story. The Saitam is an interesting concept, however, it is not an incorruptible one. And that is something that you take away from the book. Corruption even in the highest of places. And by the time the story finishes, there is a lifting in your heart, as well as increase in your thinking of different topics. Arsh has told you that this would be a successor of Hunger Games. I beg to disagree. I think... This would be a predecessor, and the successor for this book would be Hunger Games. The books to be read before this would be Challenger by Tarun Matharu, and also the Summoner series by the same author. Until next week, better read, read better. Read better.